Hey, tax students. This is part two of our chapter two video lecture, and we're going to be focusing on employee income. And the place, of course, we would report employee income is the first dollar amount on our 1040 form. That's this line one here, box one. And the amounts are coming from a form W-2. If you have multiple jobs or if you're filing a joint return and both spouses work, you would combine their W-2 income. You can always uh, Google for these forms, yeah, but I have them linked in our Law Lima resources folder. So here's a copy of a W-2 form. And it's not fillable like the other forms we've seen. The main reason why is the IRS wants people to have or employers to electronically file these W-2 forms. So what you see here is basically just an illustration of something that would be probably printed out and given to the employees or a PDF copy given to the employee. And there's multiple copies. Here this copy A would be going to the Social Security Administration, which eventually is shared with the Internal Revenue Service. And then there's a next copy. Let's take a look through the different copies and who they go to. Here's a copy number one that would be attached to the state income tax return if it's going to be paper filed, mailed in, because we have state information down here at the bottom of the W-2. Another copy given to the taxpayer would be attached to their federal tax return if they're mailing in their uh, 1040 form. Now, most tax returns are electronically filed. So the information you would see here on the W-2 would have to be re-entered into probably some type of tax software and you don't mail in the W-2 in the case of an electronically filed tax return. Only if the tax return is mailed in would you attach a copies of um, forms like this W-2 that have income taxes withheld. Here's another copy kept by the employee. Of course, we have this whole set in a PDF version, typically provided by the employer. Another copy would be attached to the local tax return. Here in Hawaii, we would have state information over here. Yeah? But in other um, places on the, uh, in the U.S., they have local taxes like New York City tax and New York State tax, in addition to income subject to federal taxes up here. And I think there's at least one more copy of a W-2 here that is kept by the employer for the records. Of course, most of this is all electronically kept already. Yeah? So this is a little bit old-fashioned, and we're just using this W-2 as an example of uh, income and other costs being reported to the taxpayer. So going through this copy here, here is the employee's Social Security number and the employee's name and address. Here's the employer's name and address, and their not social security number, but employer ID number. All important numbers that help you file taxes. And here is the income that the employee has to report for federal income tax purposes for the year. It may not necessarily match up with the employee's gross pay or take-home pay. And we'll go through a calculation to see how they get this dollar amount here in box one. And again, if the taxpayer has multiple jobs or filing a joint return and both spouses work, you would add up all these box ones. And then the total would be reported here in line one of the 1040. And again, if you're mailing in this... Uh, 1040 form, you would attach the W-2, well, let's see if there's a better box here. You would, you would staple the W-2 forms here to the front of the 1040 form. Also on the W-2, here in box number two, would be the amount of federal income taxes that was withheld by the employer for the year. 
And again, if you have multiple W-2s for the year, you add up all these box twos. And on the 1040 form, here on page two, you would enter the total here in this line. And we call this amount, remember, prepaid taxes to offset the tax liability for the year. Hopefully, maybe you paid a little bit more than the taxes for the year. So you're going to get back a, a refund after you file your tax return. Now, how do you know when a business pays a worker? That amount should be reported as a wage or salary in the first place. We're going to learn in our um, next semester tax class, Accounting 137. We're going to learn uh, start Chapter 3. That will be our first chapter. And in that chapter, we'll learn about something called an independent contractor or sole proprietor. And their income is reported on a schedule, eventually schedule number one. Again, we'll save that for next year. This semester, we'll cover all of these common types of income here. Okay? And we're now, again, covering wage or salary. But how do you know whether the worker is being paid as an employee or, or a self-employed taxpayer? Well, maybe the indication is they got a W-2 form, right? But that's not really what determines an employee-employer relationship. So we learned in our chapter two, there are certain criteria where a business will treat their workers as an employee versus a business treating their worker as an independent contractor. Now let's say that the employee and independent contractor do the same type of work for the business and will get paid the same amount of income by the business. You, the worker, what would you choose to be? Treated as an employee or independent contractor? Well, probably you want to be treated as an employee. Or if you're the business, would you want to treat your worker as an employee or an independent contractor? From the business side, they would probably want to treat their workers as independent contractors. But if you read on here, it's not a matter of choice. They cannot choose what the relationship is. What they have to do is look at the facts of the situation, of the relationship, and look at the laws regarding employees. The main thing they look at is the amount of control the business has over the worker. And the more control the business has, that's an indication of an employer-employee relationship. The less control the business has over the worker, that's an indication of a business and independent contractor relationship. Sometimes, again, this independent contractor is called self-employed. And again, First thing next semester, we're going to learn something called a sole proprietorship, a one-owner business. And we're going to prepare something called a Schedule C. But that's for next semester. Okay, again, you cannot choose which relationship you have here. We're focusing on right now where the business has an employer-employee relationship. And they're going to issue out a W-2 form after the year is over. In the case of an independent contractor, the form they issue to the independent contractor by the business is called a 1099 NEC. In the case of the W-2, we're going to see the amount of income taxes withheld, both federal and state. Also, Social Security taxes withheld and Medicare taxes withheld. You don't withhold unemployment taxes from an employee's pay, but that's additional cost the employer has to incur just for workers treated as employees. You also have to probably cover employees with workers' compensation insurance. You have to probably cover them with temporary disability insurance. Um, if the employees work more half-time or more, 
here in Hawaii, you have to cover them with uh, health insurance. Okay, it, employees are expensive, but again, it's a matter of control, how much control you have over that worker, right? We can tell the employee not just what has to be done, but how the work has to be done. We usually provide employees with um, supplies and equipment and a workspace. Not necessarily so for independent contractors. Maybe we can tell them what needs to be done, but we usually don't tell them how to do it. We usually don't set up a work schedule. The independent contractor can provide work to other businesses. Typically, an employee would only work um, in that industry for that one business. Otherwise, it may be a conflict, you know, a conflict of interest. Okay. Um, I think I showed you the W-2. Let's take a look at the 1099 non-employee compensation form. Again, you can Google this, but this is just for illustration purposes. So here is the business, their name and address and their employer ID number. And here is the taxpayer, independent contractor, and their employer ID number probably or if not, social security number. And here's how much pay they got as a non-employee, independent contractor. Even though you see a box here for federal income taxes withheld, it's generally not used. You usually don't withhold taxes from an independent contractor unless the, the independent contractor doesn't provide you with their correct name or they don't provide you with their ID number. If they don't do that, the business typically would have to force a withholding of 24% uh, and pay it over to the government. Okay. Generally not though. It, usually the independent contractor would pay taxes on their own to the government. Let's um, calculate figure out how to determine the amount of, uh, back here in the W-2, how to figure out this pay here in box one. Let's start off with the total pay of the employee. Again, we call that gross pay, not just the salary or wage income, yeah? but anything of value that's paid by the employer to the employee for the year. Then what we're going to do is subtract out withholdings from the um, pay to the employee. That's elective that the employee chooses to have withhold. And they're going to put it into something called a flexible spending account. An example would be health insurance premiums. If your employer um, pays for health insurance, that's a, usually a tax-free benefit. Some employers will charge the employees for maybe half of the insurance costs and have it withheld from the employee's pay. The employee can elect to choose to have this health insurance taken out of their paycheck as pre-tax, not taxed. Yeah, So that's going to make the cost cheaper if it's not going to be taxed income, yeah? taken out of their pay. And sometimes, again, you hear the you'll hear the term flexible spending account. Another thing that may be taken out from the employee's pay, if they choose so, is to put money into a medical savings account. Most times, most of the health insurance costs will be paid by the health insurance company. But if there is something that still has to be paid by our taxpayer employee, usually they call these amounts they have to pay deductibles because it's not covered by health insurance. Well, the employee can use the amount they put into this medical savings account to reimburse themselves tax-free coming out of their gross pay. Again, saving taxes. There are dollar limits you can put into this account, and it has to be usually spent by a certain time. 
So typically, you would only do this when you know there's going to be a big medical cost that's not covered by health insurance. Typically, you're talking like um, dental braces or even hearing aids costing thousands of dollars. Well, instead of paying out thousands of dollars out of money that you already paid taxes on, you can put money in here tax-free and reimburse yourself tax-free for those costs. Another common thing that uh, is put into a flexible spending account is uh, daycare, child care. If the taxpayer wants to have their children taken care of, or maybe even an adult that cannot take care of themselves, a dependent, you can put money into this child uh, a flexible spending account and reimburse themselves tax-free to help them cover that cost. Again, flexible spending account. And then the remainder is going to be the income that's subject to Social Security taxes, Social Security wages, and uh, Medicare, Medicare wages. You would multiply the Social Security wages by the Social Security rate. I believe that's 6.2%. To get the Social Security tax, you're going to withhold from the employee's pay. And then the Medicare wages multiplied by a smaller rate, one point, I think it's uh, 4 or 5% to get the Medicare tax. So what you're looking here at here, the Social Security and Medicare wages and the Social Security and Medicare tax, if you take a look at the W-2 form, Here's the Social Security wages that you multiply by that 6.2% to get the Social Security tax you have to take out from the employee's pay. Here is the Medicare wages multiplied by that rate to get the Medicare tax. Okay, so that's how they get the at least these four boxes here. We still haven't reached this box and the amount of federal income tax to withhold yet, yeah? So let's uh, take out some more now from this uh, Social Security Medicare wages. Let's take out um, retirement savings that the employee is going to take out of their gross pay and put into some type of retirement plan. So some examples of uh, re retirement savings, the common one you hear a lot is called 401. Remember the letter? 401k or others are like if you're an employee of the government or a nonprofit organization you may hear the term 403b or for I believe governments 457b so these are retirement plans that you can take out of your gross pay the employee and save it for when you retire hopefully I'll earn income and make a profit. Employers can also put into these plans for the employee, but we're just talking about what's being withheld from the employee's pay. Okay, there's retirement plans. So the, now the remainder after subtracting that out is the income taxable uh, pay. That's the pay that goes into your box one over here. Okay. And how do you now figure out the amount of income taxes to withheld? It's not really just a flat rate, but it goes through an estimated calculations. And to help the employer figure out how much federal income tax and state income tax to withhold, typically every time you start a new job or every so often, the employer is going to ask you to fill out this W-4 form an employee withholding certificate where you kind of estimate the amount that you're going to have withheld from them, which is based upon, remember we saw in the first chapter, the taxpayer's filing status and also the amount of dependents they're claiming. Also, any elective dollar amount more you want to have withheld from uh, um, this line here, from your paycheck. 
Now, to help the employee try to figure out the amount to have withheld, the IRS does have a um, tax site. I have it linked in our uh, Lao Lima Resources folder, a tax estimator you know, that will help the taxpayer fill out this W-4 form. Hawaii has a similar form called an HW-4 that they would give the employer to figure out the amount of state income taxes to withhold. So tell me now, is uh, this taxable income for the year the amount of the take-home pay for the year? <laughs> well, you'll be lucky if that's the case because now, remember, they also have to take out the income taxes they withhold that we just talked about, both federal and state. They also take out the Medicare and Social Security taxes we had calculated above. Yeah. And then maybe there's some other, other, other withholdings like um, union dues, maybe a, a charity, donations, maybe some other stuff. And only then you have the bottom line of your total, um, total take-home pay. So you can see there's a lot of different figures that come into the amount of pay we're talking about. Are we talking about take-home pay? Are we talking about income subject to income taxes? or income subject to Social Security and Medicare taxes. It all depends on the complexity of what's being taken out of the employee's pay. Let's go through one more illustration before we end this video. Let's talk about an employer, I'll call that ER for employer, being paid by, being paid to the employee. Yeah, this is their gross pay over here. And we know the employee doesn't get to keep all of that gross pay, the take home pay. There is withholdings. So let's kind of illustrate the withholdings here. We saw that out of the gross pay, the employee would have um, Social Security taxes taken out and we'll just call this we'll just call this taxes and then there's different types of taxes taken out yeah there's a social security tax the medicare tax the federal income tax that's the name really of our class right income tax and uh, hawaii income taxes all coming out of the employee's pay reducing the take home pay of the employee. So what's being paid by the employer is this gross pay. What's being paid to the employee eventually is a smaller take home pay. And all of these taxes eventually have to be paid to the government. But the employer up here is paying even more taxes than what's being withheld. If you see this Social Security and Medicare tax, that's just really half of the Social Security and Medicare tax. The employer has to match it again, to double it up, and then forward it to the government. Again, so what you see as Social Security taxes and Medicare taxes being paid by the employee, that's only half. The employer has to match it and pay more to the government. Another tax the employer has to pay to the government that the employee really doesn't see is the federal unemployment tax. Sometimes they call that FUTA and state unemployment tax. It's not withheld from the employee's pay. It's, it's all totally paid by the employer. Also keep in mind that the employer may have to cover the employee with uh, health insurance. And if the employer doesn't pay the whole thing, maybe it's being taken out by the employer's withholding, yeah? Health insurance. And uh, being paid to the insurance company, yeah? This amount by the employer and employee. 
Again, we can reduce the taxable income by this withholding. You're not reducing your gross the taxable income by these taxes being these taxes being taken out here, yeah? But you can reduce your taxable income by this insurance being paid by the employee withheld. Again, other things being taken out would be um, retirement. Again, the retirement plan, like the 401k. Yeah? And that's going to reduce the taxable income currently for the employee. And of course, eventually when the employee retires, they can take what they call distributions out of the plan. And only at that time would they pay taxes on the, the money in that retirement plan. But in the meantime, they can save income taxes now and use those amounts to invest in the stock market or, or bonds, hopefully making a profit, saving even more now for eventually they can retire. Other things we talked about being taken out of their pay could be for those flexible spending accounts. And then the employee can ha request a reimbursement tax-free. It's just like taking gross income out here and diverting it and getting that money tax-free to pay off their deductible medical costs, to pay off their child care costs. Okay, so again, all of this is common, kind of complicated because we're dealing with different amounts of pay and different amounts of withholding. The key thing here we're learning in this uh, part two video, again, is what's reported on the W-2 as an employee and not reported as an independent contractor, yeah, as a non-employee that we'll learn again next semester. Okay, let's stop here, and then when we come back in part three, we'll, we'll talk about more about employee, but this time receiving employee benefits.